Hi, Dr. Supachai Paninspekti. Uh, thank you again for the honor of coming to the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy and for the excellent lecture you gave. Uh, we'd love to ask you just a few follow-up questions to go a little deeper into some of the issues. Uh, so our first question would be um, okay, in connection with the cultural diplomacy. In your opinion, uh, is the role of cultural diplomacy acknowledged enough in the present debates about international economics and trades? Uh, do you see culture as a potential tool in solving the current problems of the world economy? I believe that uh, our multilateral negotiations have become more and more, unfortunately, more and more predominated by uh, political and economic uh, 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 reasons. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, economic uh, consequences of our uh, global agreements could be could be crucial for a country, but I do miss the soft touch of uh, of cultural diplomacy in a way that we could not only try to get to be more acquainted with each other. See, because negotiations sometimes get to be quite acrimonious and rough, because you don't you don't take time to get to know each other. I think if we can soften up international negotiation by some forms of cultural diplomacy. Getting to know and understand each other, to be friends, to be speaking the same language, not definitely the same language, but of course in having common understanding of certain issues, I do believe that we would be able to, uh, to facilitate uh, uh, more complicated uh, negotiation in the future. I do see in certain areas with concrete application of culture uh, as part of the solutions of our uh, global integration efforts, uh, like in the concept of having the revival of the uh, of the Silk Road that I discussed in my in my lecture, uh, we work with cities along the Silk Roads, ranging from Korea to China to Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, into Europe, uh, Eastern Europe, uh, so that we can reconstitute the the, the facilities with which travelers in the old days, thousands of years ago, can make use of so that they can, they can ply their ways or they can facilitate the travels of tourists or they can uh, uh, be committed to certain creative economies like entertainment so that people can become closer. And this is one certain concrete area that culture could be part of the international integration scene. Okay, then uh, the second question, you already talked a little bit about it uh, during your speech above, uh, about the European financial crisis. How do you think uh, European countries could overcome these crises, in, in your view? And um, how they, uh, what kind of strategy should they imply uh, to move again to, towards economic growth? I, I, uh, I do not pretend to... Uh be more knowledgeable than uh, the European colleagues, but uh, I, I have my own uh, set of recommendations that I have been uh, uh, trying to uh, to relay to uh, 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 European colleagues so that we can have uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, discussion. The first one is more tactical. The first one is about macroeconomic policies. Uh, I really believe, together with uh, uh, my colleagues at ANGTAD, that uh, at the moment, uh, the time is not ripe for, for, for PO austerity measures. Why? Because we have not yet fully recovered. And this is, I think this is a misdiagnosis uh, of the situation at the moment. I think it's a misdiagnosis to be saying that we have come out of the, the crisis. We have not come out of the crisis. We still have a lot of debt overhang. We are still in the process of debt unwinding. And in this process of debt unwinding, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, have restrictive policies on the economy to shrink the economy. At the time that uh, we have debt unwinding, the government should be spending because private sector is not yet spending. When the, when the private sector starts to spend, you would see unemployment being reduced, uh, more employment, then government hold back in the, in the, in the expenditure. But what happens now, I said it's a tactical thing because at the moment, consumers, businesses are not spending. So in Europe, government must spend, even if they have to borrow. So this is my first thing. So macroeconomic policy will have to be well diagnosed and, and diagnosed in a way that we are fighting demand deflation and we are not fighting uh, the excessive burden. That will have to be fought uh, sometime after 
uh, people begin uh, to, to spend again. The second is institutional. I, I do believe that uh, European integration is an unfinished uh, agenda. Uh, in order to have a European Union with single currency system, you need two more things or three more things to do. The first one is you need, the, uh, the like I said this morning, the fiscal union. You need to be able to jointly issue bonds that will be used commonly to finance deficit in some of the needy country, uh, areas. You, you have to admit, in the United States, if Florida doesn't have uh, the federation uh, government, Florida will be declared bankrupt long ago, or California in the United States. But they survive because they have the federation support. So this is one thing that Europe needs, fiscal, fiscal union. The second one they need is the real role of the central bank. The central bank with a role to back up to backstop uh, countries and banks by doing the last resort lending. And the last one is the banking union, which I think Europe is, is making an effort to do, but it's going to take a long time. But this is important to have a banking union so that the bank supervision, financial system will have to be supervised along the same line so that they can determine the kind of stress that European banks are going through. And so they can have uh, the kind of anticipation of crisis to come and they can uh, prevent that from happening. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to continue with a uh, question of women rights. Uh, in many parts of the world, women are gaining increased access to the global market via public and private sector jobs. Uh, however, this access remains unequal and female representation in leading position is compromised. Uh, should this inequality be tackled on an international level or should measures be primarily enacted at a domestic level? Uh, what action is uh, the UNCTAD taking in this regard? Well, it should be tackled at all levels. Uh, the gender inequality issue or gender empowerment issue should be tackled at the national level, particularly in the areas of institutional arrangement. That women rights uh, being discussed, talked about a lot, but never really enacted into the national legislative uh, uh, system. So that will have to be taken care of. The right to have equal pay, the right to have uh, ownership of, of assets, the right to exceed uh, uh, financial system, this has to be institutionalized and this will have to be done at the national level. At the international level, UN, United Nations, and also UNCTAD, we have explicit program. At the UN, uh, the Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, has uh, a few years ago established uh, another agency called UN Women. And this UN Women is an agency that works very intensively with all of us in the UN system uh, to uphold the right of women and to be analyzing uh, the impact of women uh, uh, contribution to economic development. I would cite you one area, in the areas of farm development, agricultural development. If you don't give extension services, particularly concentrating on women participation, you will miss out all on a major source of input uh, for agriculture because women provide a very strong and consistent and productive input into the farming sector. And if they are left out of the extension service education system, left out of finance, left out of technology, then you, can, you, cannot, you cannot really develop farms. So this is what we are working on together with UN Women uh, to be able to really empower women, not to be just talking about why should women be employed, but we're talking about what should be done on the ground to, uh, to help women. Yes. Like said, yeah. uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Rai. Uh, it was an honor and privilege to have you. We were here with us today. Thank and you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. 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 Th